Hi, welcome back to my channel, Display of Color. I'm Scarlett, and today we're going to be working on multiple layered resin, texture art, super fun stuff for a commission piece I did. Um, it is going to be long, so there's going to be a lot of fast forwarding because this was a very, very um, laborious process. So just bear that in mind. There will be sudden fast, super fast forwards. <laughs> so let's get started okay so these are the alcohol inks I chose this um, is on a 24 inch cradle round and my client chose what colors they wanted and gave me full reign fortunately to be able to uh, be creative and do what with that I wanted and choose the shades of the, of those colors that I felt would best uh, be complementary towards one another. Um, there is a family of five, and this is for a surprise for his um, soon to be uh, merged family. It's two families that are coming together, going to be married, and living. Um, as one so he wanted a piece that represented his family each member of the family um, being unified and uh, he gave me every he gave me um, five colors because there's five people and they each had a favorite color and I just asked for a metallic color and luckily it was silver and I was like yay because I love silver and not you know many people choose silver so a lot of people choose tend to choose gold more than anything and um and I that was it that was I kind of was able to run with it so um basically I uh had two colors that are all all five I didn't know whose favorite was whom but other than uh the clients I knew uh was orange was his favorite color and uh, there was a teal, a blue, a crimson, and a red. So, a crimson, red, of course, and then a red. So, um, I chose the colors that I, you know, have myself what best match that. Um, when it came to the teal, I had to make it from two tents, um, color obsession tents. So, I thought the best way to not get muddy purples or weird hues that other colors that I didn't want was to separate those type of colors so I did reds oranges and I used the new alloy uh, by Ranger alcohol inks as my base and um, you know I primed this cradle board and everything and then um, so I chose the different red red and oranges to get that crimson and to get those hues and then I chose like a sunset orange is a really pretty light orange by Ranger um, it's like a perfect beautiful like actual like true orange kind of color and um, you have to use blending solution with the alloys um, so that you are seeing the light is uh, reflecting that's the alloy and it's silver and sometimes against the orange depending on how you looked look the camera hits it it kind of looks like a little bit of a weird uh, goldy to it but it's just because the orange color went on top of it when I added more um, and pushed it so um, I'm just adding alcohol where I see fit where it needs where I feel it needs to be and then just kind of you know slowly adding and working um, the piece how I like it and uh, where I think you know the right direction of it I want to go with the flow overall because again this is like the base so I'm gonna keep building upon this and this is my main focal points so I'm just laying it down with the color I'm also placing the acrylic um, pearl ink here on this and it created a really fun texture which is me blotching it's kind of purposely moving in I wanted it thick so I didn't um, mix it correctly so that way it wouldn't become an actual alcohol ink because you can and I have plenty of videos showing that on my channel if you'd like to see that 
in further detail. You can check those out. But um, I just wanted it to give me um, a nice gritty texture and give um, some really cool depth when the resin went over it, as I knew it would. So um, I kind of wished I did it in the center, but I was like okay with it because I knew I had a lot of, I was going to do a lot of textures going on. And so I'm, you know, um, hindsight, I'm definitely glad I didn't because it just would have probably disappeared anyway with everything that I added, was planning on adding. So again, it's just the buildup of softening the outer edge so it's not so hard. And just, um, I have my finger over the nozzle of the alcohol just to lightly drip it because I don't want to reactivate all the inks. I just want to get a little bit on there just to push it around and move it. And sometimes, you know, I use my finger and then I wipe it off over on a cloth uh, with alcohol ink on it beside me to help uh, try to keep my finger from like getting my negative space. Um, and when I do accidentally splash, when the, uh, the blower is too high or at one point it kind of sp splashes, <laughs> I just wipe it off. So it's not a big deal. Just get alcohol, make sure you just, your hands are clean and it's a clean spot and then rub it off. Especially if you, um, prep your board really well, then that shouldn't be a problem. So I just push my inks around. I have it on cool air. Um, in the very beginning when I first, first started, um, my heat gun has kind of always been janky, the the hot and cold of it. So I'm, I have to kind of mess with it a while before it goes, okay, oh yeah, that's right, you want cold. So um, it kind of was problematic in the beginning. It was giving me heat, so it really, it dried it really fast, the inks, and I just, you know, I just worked with it, so... But otherwise, I normally have it on cool air when it comes to the alcohol inks. If I really want it to dry quickly, then I'll put it a little bit warmer. But I never have it as high at all as I do when I use my heating tool for the resin. And I love the Lazy Susan. Thank you, Miss Judy, for donating that to my channel. Um... It was really kind of her. She got a, a bigger Lazy Susan for herself, and she was so gracious in giving this to me so I could use it for my channel and when I art, and I'm in love with it. Oh, so much more convenient and easier. Um, so I had in mind, like, the family. I don't know, like I said, what of, what of the kids versus the fiancé, um you know, whose colors were whose, whom, so belonged to whom. So it was like, Ooh, um, you know, I just went with the idea of them merging together and I wanted the colors to cross over each other and blend in a unified, like individually and together as one. Um, and I kind of, you'll see with the textures, I play on that one with the color, um, you know, to bring them together. And then I used the chunky glass as like the foundation and pressure of, you know, just anything, you know, they can come together and pressure and build and, um, the glitter glass, you know, it's like reflective in diamonds. And it was actually really cool because I didn't even get to express all of that to my client. And he actually expressed it to me. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I was like the best compliment ever. He was really happy with the end result and was really grateful and gracious in his compliments. Okay, look at all that. So as you can see, the closest to the camera um, is where that texture is of the pearl. And um, what I do is this moment and other moments are of these close-ups are what I'm showing to my client right here is where the pearl texture is. And it's really fun. So... Um, because it's such a huge piece, I had to be really high up to record. So you won't get a close up like this until I, um, have my cell phone <laughs> basically showing my client. So after that was dried, 
Um, next process was I thought uh, this would be really cool to use this twine and to dye each color with the exact colors I use with the um, alcohol inks as well as I was going to do with the resin. And I wanted to, again, it to represent each color to represent a family member and then super kind of intermeshing. And in my brain, I didn't quite know how I was going to lay the um, twine on the piece, just somewhere, you know, in that center. But like um, how I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to kind of braid them or thread them through or keep some colors over here or put some over here, whatever, you know. So as I was like um, doing this, I was thinking about that um, and... I end up having to do it to separate parts because I had a UV archival spray this once it was done um, being uh, alcohol ink stained so that way it wouldn't bleed so basically I just lay them out and let them dry after dipping them and then um, I um, am just using the alcohol ink the alcohol and then um, something to put press it in, you know, uh, whatever's handy at near me, um, pipette or, you know, a stick or whatever. And then I wring it out as I pull it out of the cup. So it's not just like saturated with too much. I wring it a little bit and then I lay it down straight. And then when it's a good uh, amount of dry, and you'll see I use gloves even though I took those off because this new color I really didn't want to contaminate, risk contamination of me grabbing it and this and that. So I took my gloves off and then I used the inside out of it to hold and move <laughs> the twine. So um, don't fret. I use gloves all the time and face mask when I'm not on a live or talking to someone. <laughs> uh, so... I took this and I UV archival sprayed them um, really, really well. And then once I knew those were super, super uh, sprayed that they wouldn't bleed, I then proceeded to do the resin bit with the other twine. Oh, just kidding. That's right. Um, so, so as you see, the bad thing about the UV <laughs> spraying and leaving them to dry, I didn't realize how crunchy hard they would get. I was like, ooh, this is kind of hard to manipulate. Um, I don't know why, but in my brain I was like, oh, it'll be like twine like it is and it'll be super easy to move. And it totally wasn't. So I had to work with the shape that it was kind of in because I didn't want to like break up it, you know, like crunch the the twine and make it flexible and then that risk the seal that I had sprayed so um, you know crumbling that off or whatever and then it bleed so in my mind I was like I'm just gonna bust out some super glue and this be really fast and easy peasy and um, so I super glued my main center and then I was like just gonna lay them where I wanted them, put, you know, right on the edge, ding, 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 a dot, and then put it down, which I did do, but then I had, uh, was second guessing, and I was like, okay, I don't want it to lift up underneath and somehow make it super float, so I guess I'm going to need to band across, which I do, and then I, um, normally in super glue, honestly, it, it kind of goes invisible, so you can't really see it once you put clear resin over it. But the fact that I had to put a thicker, like a double line basically on top because of the thickness of where the twine is bunched together, um, it made it that white, you know, look. And obviously with clear resin, it showed. So I wasn't too uh, stressing too hard on it because I knew it would be hidden and you wouldn't even notice with all the other textures and things I was going to place on top of it and my idea. So... I wasn't even tripping. <laughs> but I just basically am kind of trying to get this to lay where I want it with the least amount of glue possible to keep it in place. Um, 
and I just I'm trying to get the feel as well as trying to think how do I want the other colors because I knew I was going to do the other colors but they're resin colors so I was I needed to dip the twine in the resin because they're you know pigment from resin so um it was hard not to have all the colors and and I was just like well I'll just you know I just for some reason I just thought I kind of braid it in between or through and and I didn't do that. I ended up feeling like, ah, oh, this would be better and look better and more dramatic um, this way. And then I also had, I had asked one of my girlfriends, was arting, ugh, one of these times was arting, she was on the phone myself and um, she was doing something and I asked her and I was like, what do you think, you know? And, and she was great to suggest, you know, I think that through the negative space. And I'm like, right? But I don't want to like super through. And so, um... She was like, yeah, for sure, like that. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so it's nice just to, you know, if you're doing commission piece even. Um, normally I just do my own thing and do it all. But this one I was like, hmm, I wanted to be just right and perfect. And um, and it was cool. I actually had an arting buddy, like I was, who was doing her, you know, she was doing her own thing, of course. But um, it was kind of nice. A couple of the times I was able to be having someone to talk to as I was arting. And then, like, throw out, like, hey, this is what's running through my head. What you think? You know, type thing. So, that was really fun and helpful. Because um, this piece, as well as the colors play together and look together, it really had me. There was a couple moments where I just had to kind of take a, a, a mental break from it. Going, like, okay, let me, let me step back and think. Because um, I really did have to, I mean, finding the right shades with what I specifically had. I did, you know, have to buy something specifically for this piece. Some colors and stuff too. Pigments. But, um, you know, it was like hoping it would match with what I have. Blah, blah, blah. So, it's... It's just a matter of like all colors can look great together if you have the right tone, you know, the right shade to it. So sometimes, you know, I did do a couple pieces uh, as a practice and to try to match, okay, what the colors do I have that look good together? Let me see. And ugh, it was horrible. But one, it was good to know, and two, so I didn't waste mad, mad product, but it also told me, because I was um, using some scraps, um, and it let me know I definitely didn't want it on a rectangular or square-shaped piece that I definitely needed to do a round, and so then I had to order a custom round for myself from Vayar Arts, yay! Shout out to Vayar Arts, he rocks. And he like literally hand delivered this. And this was like right in the beginning when COVID-19 happened. <laughs> so the shutdown was like legit. And so I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get anything um, because he delivered. And uh, he was a superstar and he super delivered and was like so kind. And we more than kept six feet away, it seemed like. <laughs> but thank you, Ray. So, because I was kind of like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I just didn't know what, you know, to do. And I knew he delivered, but I wasn't sure. So, I was like, phew. Because um, my wife and I were had been quarantined before it was like mandatory. Two weeks before, two and a half weeks, three myself. And then like two weeks for her before it was like a mandatory thing. Other than her going to work. And then, um, then it was like full on, you know, a mandatory. And even our work was like stay home. So... Um, but yeah, God bless those people who are still essential workers and are willing to, you know, deliver to your door and then go away, you know, <laughs> type thing. So nobody gets like contamination, <laughs> like not go away, but like walk away from the door. So I'm just like putting in here where it should go, you know, in between. I know that eventually I want the twine to be a hundred percent, um, underneath the resin um and I knew I was doing going to be doing multiple layers and with the excess all I did is wait till it uh I just cut it once I was glued and, and not messed with and once after the resin was dried then I just clip 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 and it's still kind of sharp the little bit the bitty edges I just cut it with scissors um so just be mindful of that your edges if you're not going to seriously sand which I had my wife even sand it further uh but again I knew I was going to be covering <laughs> with a ton of resin so, um, 
just be mindful. And also, if you're using textures, like I use glass. And literally, I use glass shards, like super fine glass shards. So, you know, just be mindful to let your clients know or whomever it's going to or wherever it's going um, that the, it is glass. I use glass chunks and I use the glass shards and it can cut. So, um, it's, you know, if you handle it carefully, it shouldn't. And most of it is like, you know, laid onto the resin so it shouldn't. But it, there's sometimes, it, you know, maybe scragglers that hang over the edge and you can't see it or you don't realize until you slide, you know, slide your hand over it or something that it might cut you. So it's just good to inform, especially if, you know, I don't know, you know, it's in an area that people are going to want to touch because I don't know what it is about resin, but you just are drawn to physically want to touch it because <laughs> it's so smooth and, and cool looking, I guess. <laughs> So I'm, what I'm doing right now is after that cured, I sanded it again. And as you can see, the first, you can't see any on the edges really of the, where I put the, um, the glue, but you can see the center has, um, that clear, you know, but it's like a thick looking -ish clear. Like you can't see through it, but you can still kind of see it. And that's those four little bands in that center that were kind of had to be doubled with the super glue. So, um, I'm just sticking in, so I always sand before I do anything, whether it's um, paste or anything. I always do a sand first, and then I add my texture of any kind or resin or whatever it is. Even after 24 hours, I sand my piece, you know, and then I move on. So um, this, I'm just sticking, again, the twine into the resins and one of the resins is tense it's color obsessions because uh, I didn't have an actual tea uh, teal so I made a teal so I used turquoise and um blinking right now oh and I just realized I forgot to put those pictures of those in there so I use the resin I use is turquoise seas um color obsessions turquoise seas and what was the other one ah Bondi Blue, both Color Obsession, and then I used, oh, and the Color Obsessions um, Deep Ocean Blue as well. It's like a shimmer. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> so I got that specifically for this piece. It's a red blue. So the... Bondi Blue is more blue, but the turquoise has more of a, a green tone to it. So I was hoping that it would help give that teal a little bit of a boost. So I just stuck it in the cup again and scrunched it off with my fingers the excess and then I laid it down um so there's nothing it's there's no resin it's just sanded cured you know resin um and then I'm just laying it on top where I want it and I literally uh leave it and let that cure and then I put in clear because I need it to dry because I don't want it to bleed out or anything into my clear and so I didn't want to risk just in case <laughs> If the blue started to seep out and I was like, you know what? No. So, um, what I did is I just left it as is. And then, uh, I can't remember if I cut or if I still waited to cut off the string, the twine. I think I wait. I think I did cut it as it was still. Yeah, I did. I cut it as it was still, um, wet before it cured. As you see with the scissors. So I was struggling to just wipe it, to not have it move because the least Susan was like spinning like crazy. So I had to ask my wife for assistance to hold <laughs> the round. I was like, please help me. And, um, and then I had to wipe with alcohol rag underneath anywhere I moved the string. If it left, you know, obviously a residue wherever it laid of the resin colored, I had to pick it up and then clean it off 100% with alcohol and make sure it was always fresh, clean, alcohol rag it didn't have any because there are other I didn't want any residue of that resin or that tent on anything other than just the string so it was a little bit of 
um, meticulous OCD happening. <laughs> So here is after 24 hours of a curing, and then I'm just going to do a clear flood and let that cure and wait for that to 24 hours to dry. And then, um, cause I won't work on anything any sooner than 24 hours to do a next step. So I just want to really get that center and try to bury those, uh, that twine as much as possible. And then I'll lightly sand again, and then I go on with the next um, step of texture. Just picking out some of the little lenties and popping the bubbles. I do this every single time, but I don't show it every single time on here. <laughs> and then I cover it. And I just made my own uh, out of boxes we get, like Chewy, for example, on this. I just made my own sizes for things that won't fit in my dust rack. So I'm using this uh, clear tacky glue, glue, gel tacky glue, bleh, clear gel. And it literally dries clear. So um, what I forgot to do was apparently hit the record button. I thought I hit it. I thought I tapped it, but I didn't. So I'm just showing you, this was a glass chunk. These are like chunks of glass that I stuck on there and I singly like glued it one at a time individually because I didn't have much of my tacky gel glue bottle and I love this brand and this specific one only. And um, you can get it on Amazon, some mom, but I just didn't have any more. And then I'm using Golden Clear Granular Gel. Um, so I wanted, I, I could, you could just be like, you know, with the, the glue, this is Liquitex glass beads, but I didn't, you know, want to risk wasting like any glue or not having enough. <laughs> so I did it one at a time. This is Golden's Black Mica Flakes. And these three textures I will be using right now, I'm just going to end up using the acrylic beads which is the golden clear one and granular and I was trying to cover up because I colored it purposely um so you would see it for myself to see if I wanted to use it with um the powder pigment that makes uh the blue the darkest blue that I use on here of color obsessions for the resin and if it would work and it kind of did but it wasn't really what I was looking for so I ended up nixing the idea, but I stuck it on the side just so I could see what it looked like of the thing. So that's what I was covering with my thumb. But this it, that I'm putting on are, it's a, it's the clear gel that it said or whatever by Golden. It's an acrylic bead. So it's the same thing as a glass bead except for it's acrylic. Um, it's kind of like a gel paste type of texture and it dries clear and then, um, and the thinner obviously that you use it the more you'll just see like the beads and it'll have a you know the gel part will be less obvious or whatever but I did kind of chunky uh, purposely because I wanted the gel to give me texture too in depth so um, um, and then I again forgot to record when I uh, put on the metallic silver leaf that I use powder. Um, I love that stuff. And I, this was, um, drying a lot, but not a hundred percent solidly dry. And that's when I dusted it all over it. Um, so that's the other time that I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> and it's right after this stuff, but I'll show you again, like the true video shots of the phone, um, after every process that I do. So Fortunately, at least I have that because I have to send every process and stuff I do with my any um, commission piece of a client that I have. I show them every single step and process and layer and video and and photos and um, and then I move forward if they give me the okay to move forward type thing. So I want them to be a part of it. I want them to let me know if they don't like it already. Then I can just scrap it and do it or redo it or whatever you know. 
but that's the whole point of a commission and that's why you know it costs more um is because i'll do it till they they you know i get it right for them so that's what matters and um so i always have that fortunately footage from every step being like this send this and you know recording it and stuff so at the end you will hear uh and see one of those photos and sent back to um the client um at the towards the very end so <laughs> that's a fun one so so basically all i'm doing is laying down um the texture where i feel like okay yeah i want to see it here I know I wanted to build that center and have it kind of pull out um, and be around and kind of encased around the like the center center because that represented all of them being held together intertwining was at the very very center so they each were their own single person like the twine you know that represents their own single individual self and then they come together as a whole as a family as a one as a unity and you know separate but together type thing <laughs> so i did we're trying to get a sponge to move this gel after i used the spatulas and stuff just because i was wanting a specific kind of texture look that i knew the sponge would give me but it was kind of hard because on one hand this you know that you're you're always supposed to moisten the spun your sponges before you use them, right? So that that moistness keeps it from you know kind of absorbs the sponge absorbs and stuff. So especially with the beads, it was kind of a pain in the butt. So it wasn't as great as I wanted it to be, but uh, it did what I still liked and was able to build upon it with the silver. Because if I just let it dry 100%, it would have dried clear, like I said. And then putting the resin over it, you wouldn't have seen at all the clear um, residue of where the, you know, the gel dried. But you would see the texture of the acrylic beads that were left. And I wanted to texture, I wanted those to be that silver. And... And when I was, when I was doing it, when I was rubbing it on the tops of the, with, you know, just like dusting it on, I thought, hmm. And I, cause I really liked the way the gel looked dry, like at an angle in the light, I could see where it would sheen and I could see where it was like, and there it was this really cool, kind of almost like a crackly from using the sponge. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And so then I just kept going with it and I thought, you know what? I want that. I want to see that. So I thought I better do it now before it dry dry so that way it's it really adheres because it's you know gold powder leaf so it's just super like poofy and airborne like crazy so um i didn't want it to like float away <laughs> when you put the resin on so i want to make sure that it was like there and so i just waited for it to dry enough to where you know it was more you know slightly tacky enough to hold like the powder and but not like get smeared by my you know finger lightly trying to dust it on or the brush so here's the silver and this is it just kind of on top of it I did put some acrylic beading I believe on some of the glass itself but more so i waited for the glass beads so there's a little bit in this on the centers i think um and then so there's that silver that i just put all over that and all i did to clean it off the excess where i didn't want it was um take an alcohol and a cotton ball and some alcohol and just wipe it off that way so that way it 100 percent pulled it up see there's that texture Below, that's the alcohol ink or the acrylic ink pearl that made that really cool pattern and texture. So 
I mean, just everything looks so neat. See how it like, kind of does like a crackle right there? Oh, I thought it was so awesome. <laughs> I just loved how it looked like like liquid silver just poof, like molted out and just kind of froze there in time. Like frost or something. I don't know. It was really neat. And then I put that black on the inside. I know most people will be like, why would you ever put black in the center? And I was like, because I'm, I'm cool like that. <laughs> and the end just... And I knew I was going to do the blue and stuff, like the teal around. Look how beautiful. Just had to point that out. <laughs> so, again, after that's all, like, on there and dried, then, and I waited to, you know, until it's 100% dry before I cleaned around, um, then I put a resin flood coat over it and let that cure. Oh, wait, did I... Oh, no, no, no. I think this is where I finally get to play with the color. And I'm so, so excited to finally put some of the blues up in there. As I believe was my client, too. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. But we were both like, okay, we want the other colors of the, I don't know who, who loved the blue and the teal. But I would, it would be nice to know. <laughs> Whose color went belong to whom? So, so again, I'm just popping the bubbles, making sure they're nice and pop. <laughs> because in between texture and cracks and stuff, you always want to be really good about like getting those bubbles out because you won't be able to see them sometimes and then they'll like be stuck in there forever. <laughs> you can't sand out a bubble. You can sand out a hair or a piece of lint, but not a bubble. Unless it's seriously on the surface and like mid pop. <laughs> so here is where I get excited, but it also gets tricky because of textures you can only level your piece so much. Um, you can make sure your base is level and thus in turn, technically your piece should be level, but because there's textures that are that are making, creating their own different depths and levels, unfortunately, it's really pain in the butt in that sense if you're trying to be like specific where you're putting your color and things. So just be mindful of that when you do add elements that create um, any kind of texture is going to create different layer depths and um, it's not going to be, you can't ever, you know, have a hundred percent flat top then. So you just got to work around that and, and realize that that's going to happen. That's part of the process. So you have to be okay with it and you can try to control as much as possible. Um, I would highly suggest um, letting your resin cure a lot more then so that way it'd be thicker so it's not as flowy especially because you do every time you heat it it does thin it so um, but I just wanted just a little bit of that uh, teal to go through the and yes that's supposed to be my teal <laughs> Uh, to go through, I thought it would be better, more blue teal than a turquoise, or of a you know turquoisey teal than a like a greeny teal, um, with all those colors visually. So that's what I did. And then I'm doing the center, and for some reason I thought maybe it, like the heating and the melting, it would naturally just kind of pull out to where I wanted it to. I don't necessarily want to follow all the clear glass, I thought, you know. But ultimately, that's exactly what I did, and I just liked watching it bleed out, like just kind of fan out. That's kind of what I wanted it just to kind of like, like it was reaching out, you know. Like growing and my lovely wife um, came in out of nowhere when I was already in 
and was so excited by what I was doing that she decided to go live on her Facebook, um, which I didn't even know she knew how to do that, let alone, I don't even know how to do that, so, <laughs> uh, so that's her phone and her on, you know, she's on Facebook, and, and that's her going live, and people showing up, and, and it turns out the client actually saw was on and was watching so that was kind of cool um and uh yeah so that was really fun and neat and and it was it was really cool and then because she was trying to encourage me to do this on the live which i end up doing the next layer that's why we end up doing a live stream um the next like color layer or whatever or big thick flood or something I can't remember <laughs> it'll come up I just remember how to do texture so I think I did the glass beads and then I went did a live stream it it definitely says I have a little blurble saying that so and I just really like I just really loved how it was I just wish it wasn't like I said like the flow kind of pulling her away because it was just so perfect but like I said resin has a mind of a mind of its own and you can hope and pray all you want and you know inevitably it's going to do its own thing <laughs> you can try guiding it as much as possible but you can't 100% control it so the good and the bad of fluid art <laughs> and that's kind of fun and also great about it But I knew I wanted to do the glass beads and I knew I wanted them up um, on the rocks as texture on the outer edges. And I wanted because I knew they would reflect and really, really well because they're glass as well. But it's a different, you know, texture because I also, of course, was going to be doing the glitter glass, which is like super, super finely um, thin layers of glass. It's like glass shards. And, um, and they are very reflective, um, in the light. It looks really neat. It looks like glitter, like diamonds. It's awesome. And it's just a really, to me, elegant, classy, posh little texture that just really makes a piece <laughs> complete. So I was starting to get it like a little frustrated because I was like okay I was hoping my like resin would just start getting thicker because I, I really wanted it to um, stay put uh, but I wanted it to go around and in between that clunk cluster of uh, the chunkier glass chunks so um, I knew on those parts that I'm gonna, I was going to put the glass beads on there even more so and then add some more of the color to show. I just knew it looked so cool and it totally did. And there's a, there is a close-up of it too that I post. It's just rad. I really love it. So um, I also added some silver leaf to the like center bits and a little bit of the edges and stuff just again to give it uh, some more texture and some more... Um, reflectiveness that's just beautiful but because the glass beads um, dry the the gel of it putting it on thick it dried it a little bit thicker and kind of muted um, those blues to me I was like you know what and so I just added blue again um, but I really liked how this was. Unfortunately, I'd rather have not have had to have done a second layer of the blues personally. Um, other than just a little bit more of the teal lightly or whatever, but not as heavily as I had because of the glass muting. When I put the glass bead gel on it, muted it some. Isn't that beautiful? But, you know tis what it is so here's the liquitex glass bead so basically my suggestion if you're gonna have something that's like <laughs> that transparent then you definitely want to make it as thin as possible the 
the paste because even though it's white here, I did, I did, you know, do it kind of thick. And I had a lot of those beads up on there too. Oh, it's not like it's sparse, like the acrylic. Or I felt it was like, like harder to get than having a lot. <laughs> so, um, there was a ton of glass beads up in that, every scoop. Um, and it's, ugh, it was just like grating your teeth. Like it's just like, ee, you know, the sound and it's like, tink, like some of them are pinging off and you're like, oh my gosh, as you're trying to like scrape it across and move it. <laughs> and if, and that was the other thing. If there wasn't enough gel, then it wouldn't really like glide across or I couldn't really move it. So I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> so I was just having to work it. And this was my first time using the glass gel of the acrylic and the mica and the um, and the beads, you know, the glass beads and the acrylic beads. Um, I don't know why that is. I tend to use like things for the first time that I really, really have been obsessing wanting to use. And I just, um, haven't that are really like special and I tend to use them on my commission pieces and probably, you know, they're, you know, products like stuff like this is not, it's not cheap and, <laughs> So that's probably why too things are special. I don't want to just like willy nilly put it on something and it not turn out great or you know or something like that. So that's probably why. But um, <laughs> but most people probably would practice with something or try it out first before they do it on a commission. But hey, that's so far <laughs> it's worked for me. <laughs> my streak. It's kind of how I am with my art as a whole. If you ever watch my channel and you know like. Literally, what I do is what you see. If I try anything, you see my first attempts always. I don't like practice and then and then give you a first attempt like it's raw, <laughs> raw and uncut. <laughs> so again, I'm kind of wanting to go over where the acrylic was beads, just because I want the you know the reflectiveness of those. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> This is that part. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? When it's all dry, isn't that gorgeous? So this was a... Uh, so I let this dry and then um, I noticed like, hmm, it's a little blase blah. So you're going to have to go uh, to the live stream to watch the in-between until you get to this part where I'm doing a clear resin coat. And this is just to, um, so I can add a little bit more of my glitter glass where I wanted it. So the key with glitter glass is you really want it, um, the resin to be thin um, because if it sinks, then there goes your facet, the reflectiveness of it, um, has to be on top of the resin for the light to reflect correctly for it to give it that diamond appearance. And before this, I had done a aluminum tape. So I created a really high reservoir around the border that way I can um, use a lot more of my resin. It wouldn't go fall off at all. And that way it would for sure cover all of the twine. Because uh, it is, you know, sharp. <laughs> Once resin layer after resin layer goes on, it gets pretty rough. And I wanted my vision, what I wanted it submerged. So I'm just shaking. I just put it in a cup and I'm just shaking it on with the cup where I see it. And um, I did have it on thin, but at the same time, I should have waited a little bit longer um, to let it cure, you know, thicken up a little bit so that way it sunk less so I would have to use less glitter glass even more so because it definitely is not a cheap product. So um, a little does go a long way if you can get it right. But I also was uh, concerned about lint and dust falling in and me not being able to grab it out because of this process of weight, you know. So, and then it was so thin 
which inevitably there was two little lint bits <laughs> on the negative space. Of course, it's always the negative space, right? So um, you will see that <laughs> coming up very shortly. I actually have the volume and everything on for you to hear me showing my client what I just what I did to my piece. It's these therapies. But yeah, so I'm just sprinkling it around and I'm kind of watching it. And if I start to see maybe it sink, I'm just letting it, you know, watch it. So I'm trying. It's like a touch and go with str inner struggle of patience. But at the same time, I'm like concerned about anything falling in as well as trying to get this on there. Because if I have to re-resin over it, then basically I just wasted glass because it's going to 100% cover it and you won't get to see it. So you don't want that to happen. But it was beautiful. It was perfect, um, except for me messing with the lint. <laughs> so I just wanted you to see this. Ignore. I'm going to have to redo this stupid part. I cannot believe I just did that. But anywho, basically I shouldn't have messed with it. I saw a little something and I went to pick it out and I made it worse and after this amount of time but so I'm just gonna have to leave it be hopefully it'll flatten I don't know because it hasn't been 24 hours to even start the cure process but fortunately anywho so if anything I'll have to just sand that little part and just kind of paint some resin right there to make sure it's not too um what do you call it like you know I'll literally have to just like paint that little area or whatever and um, sand if it cures if it doesn't drop but it's because it's you know not quite cure but cure but I just wanted you to see the the what I'm talking about if you can see the twinkling and the slight how it looks like diamonds but it's on this part too I just can't get it to show but this is all glitter glass so it's literally shards of glass and as you see it here really close up it's just clear, clear, clear shards of glass. Blech. But, you know, if you look at it like this with the, the whatever hitting it, it's like twinkling. It's so pretty and elegant and rich and just beautiful. And it's like, you know, it is expensive. <laughs> all the things I play with are expensive, unfortunately. But all the cool stuff is, right? Like, all the cool things are. So as you can see where it looks like divots, that's where the glass is, and I just can't hit it with the light correctly for you. But as you move, and especially once it's fully cured, I can hold it up and then you can really see it, all the different facets of it playing. Um, so this is done, except for this part now. So <laughs> I shouldn't have messed with it, but there was like the tiniest, tiniest dust molecule. And I was like, oh, oh no. And especially of course in my negative space, right? Of course. And yeah, so I shouldn't have tweaked out on it, but I did. I did it out myself. Here, if I back up further enough, you can see that part. I'm glinting. So I hope you love it. Let me know. Like I said, I'll just have to sand that. If it doesn't flatten by tomorrow, then I'll just sand it and then paint a little resin right there and you won't even know. It'll be, it'll look like this, just perfect. So I'm just showing you cause I'm crazy. <laughs> but I love it. I just love the glitter glass. Anywho, so yeah. So then in 30 days it'll cure. So we're gonna go. So I just um, finished it and I took it outside. It was gorgeous and I did have to sand um, it and I did have to put resin over it. And as you see, it is gorgeous. So unfortunately, I, I checked on it. I want to say it was like seven or eight hours into the curing and um, I want to make sure that nothing sank, you know, the glitter wasn't sinking and stuff. And um, otherwise I had to add some more while it was curing. Otherwise it wouldn't stick. And then it, again, like I said, I'd have to waste resin and glass by doing it again. So um, unfortunately when I did notice it, I did notice a pe two pieces of lint and I was like, oh no. 
So my wife is holding the piece upside down compared to how I arted it, but that's okay. Um, and it was on the opposite side as well as at the top side now, but how she's holding it. So is where all that happened, I believe. Right. So, um, but yeah, but thank you everyone. And please hit that thumbs up, subscribe and share and all that jazz and happy arting and God bless. Look how gorgeous that is. Seriously. So gorgeous. Love it. Look at my little hobbit of a wife too. How funny. <laughs> I like the piece looks like it's a 40 inch round instead of a 24 inch round. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But yeah. Bye.